all of my good days outweigh my bad days and I I won't complain Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here and I want to welcome you to my food force. In this episode I'm going to share with you why I've come to realize why the Methley plum tree is the easiest tree to grow in your backyard. You can grow this tree in the ground or even in a large container. And so if you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button, to subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell for notifications so that you'll be first to know when a new video is dropped. Okay, let's get started. Okay, family, I'm gonna show you this um, methylene plum that I have growing in a container at the back of my greenhouse. It's huge and we cut it a lot. My son and I pruned it, pruned it a lot. But I'm gonna show you these plums. See them on the tree? That's ready. You gotta get it when it's about that state and then the next day you can eat them. I mean, they'll be fully ripe. And here are three that I've collected for my breakfast. And the reason why I'm showing you this tree is because they are self-fertile, meaning you don't have to have cross-pollination between one plum tree variety and another one. And like I see another one is getting ready to be right pretty soon right there. So it is a good tree. If you are a small uh, gardener, you can put it in a container as you see here. Now, I have two more. One right here, in the one is in the ground, and then you can see the faint outline of the blue half 55 gallon drum that I have the other one in. These are really good trees to grow if you have a backyard food forest because you don't have to worry about them, like I said, uh, being cross-pollinated. Now, I do have two other trees. I have a wild one way back there in the side garden, and it's a wild Texas plum. And then on the other side of the food forest, I have a Santa Rosa plum tree. Um, I purchased them the same time that I got these other ones from Stark Brothers, but that Santa Rosa hasn't put on any fruit yet. So, remember, methylene plum and... I got mine from Stark Brothers. Now, I want you to look right here. I just noticed something. I'm gonna go in closer. Right there. When you're watering, that's what I'm doing, watering my food for us. Be very observant and check things out. Because right here, I'm gonna go in closer. I can see aphids. And since this fruit, this tree is not going to fruit, I'm just going to cut it off. Let me show it to you close up. See all those aphids? Are those aphids? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Those are aphids. Most of them are still tiny, so they are aphid eggs. But there, you can see up toward the end, over here, I'm gonna zoom in right there. They're getting bigger. So sometimes you won't see ants covering them. They haven't found them yet. But this is covered with aphids. So I just took it off, okay? You can just break the little tip off. And I've told you guys several times that that moth will lay those aphids on tender leaves, small, young leaves. So you see how small those are? as opposed to leaves like right here. So that's what you wanna look at. I see some more. I see some more right there. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna put this somewhere. I'm gonna put that right there in that plant saucer because I don't want the eggs to escape. And I'm gonna wash my fruit off. So I'll put that down there too. But I see evidence. Where did I see it? The wind is real high, so I have to be careful. Oh, let me see if I can bring this branch down here. 
Yes. Okay, let you see it. There's another one. So I'm just gonna break it off. I'm just gonna break it off because I'm not gonna waste my time trying to uh, put a lot of water on the drown them because it's not that important. This tree is not gonna fruit this year. It would have already. So I'm gonna bend. I see one more. I see two more branches right there, right behind it, and then there's another one on that side. So that's too much for me to tear down. Okay, I'm five four, and this tree is about 10 or 12 feet tall. So I'm gonna blast it with my water hose. I'll be back. Before I start blasting it with the water hose, I gotta get these out of the way. So, I always have chairs all around the food for us. Let's put that there. And then I'll turn my hose on full strength. Took me years to figure out that you don't need to put a lot of spray on aphids. If you drown them, that's good enough. So I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm gonna put this on here for about five minutes. I'm gonna drown these with a strong force of water and I'll be back. Okay, so you can see everything looks clear. I drowned those aphids. I'm going closer so you can see the leaves look real nice and healthy. I drowned them. The methylene plum is my favorite as far as maintenance and giving me Fruit, I like it better than any tree in the food forest. One, it is the first tree to come out of dormancy, as I said. And it's the first fruit tree that we'll be able to eat some of the harvest or harvest some of the food from. And it doesn't have any major problems other than every now and then you'll get a few aphids. But Japanese beetles don't eat it, the leaves all up or um, some of the other pests that I have in the food forest. So it's just a really cool tree. One thing I want to tell you is you, all you have to give it is some comfrey tea or compost tea. It doesn't need any other fertilizer. And I just give them it some tea, those trees, some tea uh, when they're coming out of dormancy. And that's it. One time a year. That's pretty cool, guys. It's almost maintenance free. Okay, guys, I'm in the house. And I've washed my plums and I'm eating them. And I want you to know they are super sweet. I kid you not. They have a slight little sour twang that rolls on your tongue or your taste buds, but they're delicious to eat just right off the tree. And um, I've never made jelly or jam out of them because we just like to eat them, me and my grandkids. But I've heard they make real good jelly. And I just want to share that they come in various sizes, but they're delicious. A few weeks ago, I sprinkled some seeds in these two containers. In the first one, I put Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe. And over here, I put Sugar Baby Watermelon. And then a week or so later, I put two trellis together, see them? With some stakes, one on the end and two on each side. And I tied them together with some twine. Now the melons, or I should say the vines of the plant are putting on flowers and tendrils and vines. So I'm weaving them in here. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, I think you saw it. And I may have to put some twine across here because this is so, uh, the space is so wide. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll do that tomorrow. Today is the holiday Memorial Day, and I hope you all are having a wonderful restful day. I'm not having my Monday night live chat that I have every Monday because it's a holiday. 
But anyway, I'm going to put some twine here. And if you're new to my channel, I decided I'm going to make my videos kind of blog style. So I won't be doing a lot of editing. And so I won't even take that part out about the announcement about not having the Monday night chat. But uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is put some more twine here. So as the melons grow up, uh, they can weave in and out, in and out of the openings. And then I'm going to use stockings or uh, old uh, t-shirts. I'll cut them up and envelope like in a hammock, the fruit and tie them to uh, the frame and the post. I've done this a lot of times before. I just haven't grown any melons in a long time because I was really running out of space in the food for it, forest. And I decided that uh, with the uh, inflation and price gouging, I love cantaloupe and the Minnesota midget cantaloupe. I had seeds that I had froze for, you know, a long time. And I love the sugar baby. You can't go wrong with the sugar babies. They have a lot of seeds in them, but even if they're not all the way ripe, they will still be sweet. That's why they call them sugar baby. So I'm going to put a picture of the sugar baby in here and a picture of the Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe. And what I like about that, I could just cut it half in half, scoop out the pulp and give each one of my grandchildren a half. You, know, you don't have all that slicing and to do. And another thing, you don't have that guesswork about when the Minnesota Midget uh, Cantaloupe is uh, ripe because it'll fall off the vine when it's ripe. And you can see here, it doesn't have a long distance to go. The ones on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to show you. I got to gently take this and wind it weave it in and that's a long vine there so i'm going to just stop right here for this vine because i want to put that string here and i'll show you that in the next video so here's another long one i'm gonna just gently you gotta be careful because you don't want to break your vines okay and i'm just gonna weave it and leave it uh, too just like right here and then i'm gonna put some more twine like i said okay and I'll show you in another week or so how they look, okay? All right. Okay, guys, that's it for today. God bless you. You know that I love you and God loves you too. Bye now. Bria and I are getting this order ready so that we can ship it. And we always take pride in our orders. Right, Bria? Yes. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching.